BP Australia, CUB, Westpac, Rocker Brothers, and Foodland. Victoria Park, Collingwood versus Adelaide on AFL Live. And welcome to Victoria Park for the continuation of round 24 in the AFL competition. Two of the form sides in the competition this afternoon, Collingwood against the Adelaide Crows. And what a finish to the season. The last round, of course, a big game tomorrow in Perth. But first things first, let's deal with these two clubs as we take a look at the AFL ladder and you can see what it all means. If Collingwood wins today, neither Geelong or Footscray lose, Collingwood will get the double chance. In fact, the Magpies could still finish on top, although that's highly unlikely. Last week, Collingwood most impressive in a victory over Carlton. They won that game by 16 points after trailing at three-quarter time. Mick McGuan and Tony Shaw quite outstanding. And Ron McEwen weighed in with four goals. There's Scotty Russell on the run, a former South Australian popping one through. And what about Adelaide? They demolished Geelong at Football Park last Sunday. At the end, the margin was 91 points. Tony McGuinness, Chris McDermott and Rodney Maynard, terrific. The Crows led by 72 points at half-time. Scott Hodges kicking 11 goals in that match, and his clash today with Gary Pert should be a beauty. Collingwood on the ground now. The Adelaide Crows are out there as well, and the crowd today, as you'd expect, pretty good, always the case of Victoria Park, and the faithful realising a lot is riding on this afternoon's game. Back in round nine, Collingwood and Adelaide played a thriller. It was Collingwood by five points at Football Park. Gavin Brown was the star in that game. Well, he's missing this afternoon, but Collingwood, as you can see, just sneaking home. And with me this afternoon is Bernie Quinlan. And Bernie, what about these two sides? Very important game. Great finish to the season, and Collingwood must win today. Yes, it has been a terrific finish, uh, especially Adelaide the last five weeks. Their form has been outstanding. They did start the season very slowly, very settled Collingwood side. They will be uh, a big loss with Gavin Brown out of the side with those strained stomach muscles. It's an ongoing injury, so it's a little bit of a concern for the Collingwood side. It's good to have right back. He was out for about three or four weeks with that uh, foot injury. He adds a lot of pace to that Collingwood side. Kurt and McCartney very strong in defence. I think Scott Hodges will have a tough day today. He was outstanding last week. Scott Hodges, 11 goals at full forward. Has struggled to put two games together. Jarman in the middle has been very good. Maynard has played in every game for the Adelaide Crows in 91-92. He's been outstanding Standing at centre half back, smart, very good back line. I'm a bit disappointed they didn't make the uh, six this year. Their form last, I thought, in '91, their first season in the competition, did warrant them to be a big chance to be playing in the finals in '92. But never mind, they've missed out. They're finishing off the season on a very good note. Yes, playing their best football of the season. They've won five straight as we go down from Mitsubishi Motors to Max Stevens on the boundary. Good afternoon, Max. Good afternoon, Dennis. And uh, I just love coming here to Victoria Park. And I don't know if it's silly wearing this hat, but. Um, I uh, may have won the bet. Now, our current temperature here at Victoria Park are very, are very cool, 11.1 degrees. The expected top, 15 degrees, so we're a little way off that. The rain is starting to come down. The wind, 15 to 20 k's, blowing across the ground, favouring right of screen. Goal advantage, none whatsoever. Ground condition, good. Now, the forecast, cloudy with rain on the way. Well, I'm here to tell you, the rain is already here, but just coming down gently at the moment. The game, man. And that cap in front of the Collingwood Social Club. It's Collingwood against the Crows then. We'll be back right after this. Round 24 commenced at the SCG last night. Richmond decisive winners over Sydney in that battle for the wooden spoon. The margin there, 30 points. Four other games being played today. Three of them absolutely essential to the makeup of the final six. Melbourne go against Hawthorne. Geelong and Essendon at Waverley. Footscray and Brisbane. And the game really of no consequence is Fitzroy against North Melbourne. We'll have progress scores from all matches throughout this afternoon with SAS viewers enjoying a replay of Melbourne and Hawthorne at the completion of this match here at Waverley Park here. It's not Waverley Park unless I'm sadly mistaken. This is Victoria Park. Forked at the hurdle. What about selections, gentlemen? Bernie, what do you think? Oh, I think Collingwood have to be favourite, especially playing here at Victoria Park. 123-point winners 
last year over the Adelaide Crows, so uh, Collingwood for mine. Bruce, Bruce McAvaney is with us this afternoon. Dennis and Bruni, yes, uh, you'd have to go for Collingwood. Interesting, isn't it? If it was in Adelaide, I think Adelaide would be favourites, but here Collingwood 3-1 to one on and Adelaide 2-1 to one against. But now I think Collingwood in a big match. But you've got to say the Crows finishing the season in a blaze of glory, aren't they? No doubt. They've done very well in the last uh, five weeks. They've been tremendous. Interesting, if they win this afternoon, their record over their first two seasons will hang at 50% exactly. It was 10 and 12 last season, a chance to go 12 and 10 this afternoon. The umpires today, Chris Mitchell and Grant Vernon. It's a cool one, and the chance of rain later. Big crowd, most of them hostile to the Crows. And away we go, McGuan and McDermott jostling. That'll be interesting if they stay together this afternoon. Shaw's got the ball. Jarman's got Shaw. Jarred free. McDermott having a marvellous season towards half forward. Gaper goes back. Couldn't control it. Picked up now by Jamison. The tackle too high on Gaper by Linda. And Gaper will take the free across half back. Dennis uh, Collingwood won the toss. And uh, kicking with the breeze in this first quarter. Francis touched off the boot. McGuan. Long kick down towards half forward. Bickley running back with the flight of the ball. Smart comes to it. Smart, left half back. Kicks for the boundary and finds it on the bounce. Good kick too. He had very few options. Just looking around, Bernie, there are so many matchups between informed players. You've got Wren and Monkhorse, Jarman and Shaw, McDermott and McGuan. Dennis spoke about a moment ago. McGuinness and Francis. It's going to be a great game. There's some very important midfielders to take care of here today, Bruce. Bickley's quick kick. Ben Hart and out of play. Going through the teams a moment ago, just two new players for Adelaide, two rookies in this team, Jonathan Ross and Ben Hart. So 18 of the 20 played last season, and they've obviously uh, improved with the tempo of the play at the AFL. Monkhorst, and Wren, and also McDermott, and again, it'll be a ball up. If I think one player you mentioned would have to be in the running for Rookie of the Year, Ben Hart. He's been magnificent in, in defence all year for the uh, Adelaide Crows. So Wren goes with Monkhorst. Monkhorst maybe. McGuinness got a little tap away. Jamison, the leading goal kicker from last year, towards Bickley. He's had a tremendous year. Dacos, clever. Russell, round the body towards full forward. And a run out of play by Ross. So a couple of youngsters there together. Light rain falling already, Bruce. So uh, conditions uh, are not going to be easy, especially for the forwards this afternoon here at Victoria Park. Wren and Rocker. Maynard, this is Lee, reflects off the man in front of him, Monkhorst, is the mark paid? No, I thought it came off a player close to the kicker, not the case, Monkhorst to McGuan, probing kick, down towards the kickoff line, the Crows have got the numbers, it falls forward, McMullen snaps, goal! First blood to the Magpies, that's the margin. There's McMullen named on the interchange bench. You've seen a very quick hand pass coming from the big fella Monkhurst to Nicky McGuan, one of the favourites for the Brownlow medal. Good roving there by McMullen. Picked up again by Collingwood after playing 20-odd games with Essendon. Collingwood by a goal at Victoria Park. Poor bounce. Short oh. team crunch there by Linda. Now Turner, short to Stasevic. Rocker, Ross. Smart, well played again. Bickley's handball is a little far for Lee, but he's got time. He could have steadied a bit more. Could be lucky here for Adelaide. Good take there by Tasker to Jarman. Quick kick away into the centre half forward area. Micken. McCartney. Lip tack. Yeah, free kick against uh, Francisco. I think advantage by Bruce. Sorry. It was Hodges couldn't take it from Jamison. Now Jamison calls Lip Tech out, says it's my footy and doesn't take it cleanly. And Kurt gets away and bangs it to half forward. Good kick that one. Smart comes to meet it. Lost it. Eventually scrambles it towards the boundary line with some assistance from Russell. Watch this again, Tony Shaw, wide open. It's Bruce Linder lining up on the wing. He is playing as a forward, but every time there's a centre bounce, he's starting off uh, right in the wing position. He's being picked up by uh, Michael Gaper, but he charges in every time there's a centre bounce. Chance of a tag team match in the World Wrestling Federation there. As the ball comes towards the wing, it's Turner. Linder again, not popular. Still he goes, 
at the head of Shaw. McDermott on his knees. Well done. Lindner. McDermott, more disposals than any other player in the competition. Monkhurst goes up, thumps it down. Francis with courage. Monkhurst slides him, but it falls to Hart. Hart a kick inside the attacking 50. Hodges up in front, knocked away by Perth. Collingwood have got the numbers with Dashitz Richardson. Here's Tony Shaw right half back. Uses the ball nicely. Turner has it. One of 11 players from their premiership side going around this afternoon. He kicks the wards half forward. Wren is the only man at home. 21-year-old takes the mark. One of the most exciting players in the competition. Swings it wide to Tasca. To Genza. Short to Tasca again. Good play at half back. Bang. Gets some distance. So the breeze not holding it up all that much. McCartney. Left foot. Round the body. Not good. Out of play. And it'll be Tregenza from centre wing. It's been a promising start by Adelaide. They're matching Collingwood very early, I know. Almost felt they were intimidated here last year. And at Moravan, but uh, a different look. Licken, well done. To Liptak at half forward. Centering kick, not effective. It's a poor option in the end. I know he was going for Hodges, but uh, Gaper snaffled it easily to Francis. Jarman couldn't cut it off. Russell to Shaw. Solder dummy cleverly. High, slow kick. Takes a while to get there. Gave Wren the opportunity. Jarman, his hands are very quick. They're clever. Bickley, Lee's kick. Should find the boundary line. And Francis just able to keep it in. Jamison puts the pressure on. Excellent balance by Francis. Well played, Moncourse. Turner, clever. Here the path of McGuan. That was clever too. This is Fraser. Fraser from forward of the wing. Inside the attacking 50. It ricochets off Rocker. Now Rowe deep in the pocket. Right on the boundary. Pulls it back. It slides across the face. Bounces out of bounds in the opposite pocket. Just watching the Crows uh, at this stage, Dennis. Really, they'd have to be the best handball uh, team in the competition. They've got four players in the top ten in the AFL leading in the uh, in the handball di division. Had 183 handballs last week. A remarkable statistic. Yes, unbelievable. Russell dragged off it. Bounces down towards the pocket as a result. And Tasker pushes it across the line. So, overcast conditions at Victoria Park. The Crows, their last game of this season. Collingwood for a place in the top two. Snap from Rocker is great. So Maynard, the lone crow to have played in every one of the 44 matches the club's been involved in. Bickley to half for Krasiska back from injury. Couldn't quite make it. And uh, he's been paid, I think. Well, he's been paid a free, Bruce. Well, I don't think he could have played that mark. He's been touched in the back. Kick from a uh, Krasiska right. With him, lip tack out of play back to Rocker for a moment he missed a goal for the first time in his career and that's been a short one last week against Carlton he's kicked 27 goals before today in nine matches been a great start by him Wren Dacos playing up the ground around the body to centre half forward Jamison sweeping handball to Ross Smart Good skills on his left foot. Not a very good kick. Missed by Hart. It was a hard one. Richardson's handball. Moncourse sits and waits. Mickey Gafer. Jamie Turner, the 30-year-old. Has McGuan short. Goes to him. McDermott. McGuan's handball's a beauty. Starsevich. Rowe provides the first lead. Starsevich looks further afield. Goes to centre half forward. McMullen. Gets around Tasker. He's a good kick normally. Goes for it. I reckon he might have kicked it. It's through. McMullen with two. Collingwood with three. And the Maggie stretch it a bit now. Well, it's a great start by the Magpies. One of the Premiership contenders, of course, this year. In a very wide uh, open race for the Premiership. But Collingwood, a very hard side. They've been good in all the tight games. Last week, went into that game against Darden's underdogs and came through with flying colours. Some very good shepherding behind play there, provided for McMullen. And he's kicked two very handy goals early in the match for Collingwood. Starsevich, as you can see, doing a bit of work at centre-half forward. It's been on for some time, Matt. And every bounce. This is Shaw, dragged off it. Wren. Now they've been breaking down at centre-half forward hopelessly at the present time. 
This time, Micken picks it up and gives it across to Tregenza. And boots it down towards full forward. Pert reaches over the top of Hodges to fist away. McGinnis off the ground. Well, very opportunistic there. Didn't miss by much, Tony McGinnis. It's been a problem all season long for Adelaide. Set a half forward. Mark Micken casting the role this afternoon. No doubt he'll give 100%, but one wonders if he's the man for the job as the ball goes around the outer side. Tregenza surely in the back. We get a free kick. Crowd not happy, but no doubting that one. No, no doubt about that. Had to be paid. Tregenza just forward of the wing. Down towards half forward. Sits it up in the breeze. Micken was held. He'll get the free. There's his mobility's a problem at centre half forward, I feel, Dennis. You really need a, a big, tall, free flowing sort of player playing at centre half forward. Always hard to be nice. They're hard to find, aren't they? Moncourse on his chest. Shaw, Jamison. Oh. oh, poor old Tony. That's two now. As if he can beat a penalty. As you were explaining last night, Bruce, the player was not involved in the contest. He got there late and only went for the player. As we see it again, he had no intent in going for the mark there, Rod Jamison. He was fractionally late. But as the umpire explained last night, he must be involved in the actual contest going for the ball, otherwise it could be a 50-metre penalty, as it was on that occasion. Short a centre-half forward. Missed by Francis. It was a hard one. Oh, played, Ben Hart. That was brilliant. It's kicked a half forward. Richardson. Clever against Daryl Hart. Well done, though, Daryl Hart. Jarman. Didn't use that as well as you'd expect. Monkhorst. Gets around Micken to right. Tries to squeeze it to centre wing, and I think that's out on the fall. Turner unable to get there. Showing a lot of manoeuvrability there, the big bloke for Collingwood, Damien Monkhurst. He's played very well. The last half of the season, he's been tremendous. Micken, cop run there, and gets the free kick. So second kick for Micken in uh, a couple of minutes. Best and fairest at Adelaide. Three times best and fairest at West Adelaide. Captain Brisbane. Famous sporting family, assistant player for Australia in basketball. Mickens kicked to the goal square, thumped away by Pert. Lip tack chases. Tries to scoop it to Tregenza. Was effective. Tregenza's left foot. Persiska and gave all. Oh, gee, they made a mistake. Pert thumps it away. Missed by Lip tack Fraser. Fraser in a tight situation. Dragged down. McDermott quick hands to McGuinness. Just outside the 50. Hoisted very high, in from the side for Siska. Wouldn't have leads in the race, but it's out of bounds. Just over 14 minutes remaining till quarter time. Three is quite a strong one. Nicken works his way in front. All Collingwood, third. Russell, hurried kick across the goal face towards the opposite pocket. Jamison did well to win front position. Still he goes. Lacking support. Tony Shaw Shepherds this time. McGlone feeds it to Shaw. A throw, says the umpire. It was perfectly positioned. By Vernon. Setting the angle. Now Jarman, I doubt, will get the distance from here. An indication of how strong the breeze is. At least it will tell us something. Kick from just inside the 50. Back right on it. Now it starts to fall, about five metres short. Just a through for a minor score. So Adelaide are two behinds and Collingwood are three straight goals. Mullen with two and Rocker with one, the goal scorers. Pert, former Fitzroy champion. Straight down the centre. He is a magnificent kick. No exception. Red in the front spot. Well played, Monkhorst. Ben Hart. Now Bickley's quick kick. Linda has to sit and wait and does it well. Well, he can thump the ball a bit, Bernie. You'd, you'd say he's a slightly longer kick than Andrew Jarman. Yes, he would be. He'd be kicking from a similar position, a better angle than Jarman. Jarman's kick did hold up just at the end, Bruce. So the, the breeze is a slight factor. I think it has uh, probably died a little since the start of the game. So you give him a rough chance here. Drop punt. It's going to be very, very close. Doesn't quite get there. Well played by the Collingwood defence. The handball by Alan Richardson was slick to right. It was very well controlled to Gaifer. Gaifer tries another one to Russell. Remarkably playing his 70th match in his third season. 
Smart was in the front spot. Stasevich at the back. Here's Francis. On the wing to Russell. No one to kick to, really. Goes for the long option. That's Rocker. Forced to come a long way from goal. Fraser tries to go off the deck and missed. Maynard gets it to Ross. And Ross from half back. A very high kick. Back towards the wing. Hart did brilliantly. Eyes only for the ball. On his knees. Gets it across to McDermott. The boots are down a half forward. Long forced his back. Adelaide doing a lot of attacking into this breeze. McCartney running away from half back. Probing kick to half forward. Rocker storms up. Got hands to it. Finds it to get on the ground. Everyone fell over. Rocker had a lot more time than he thought. He put it out of bounds on the full in the right full forward pocket. A lack of talking there. Not necessarily the young man's fault. As he probably could have done better in the end, but uh, he did have a bit of space and a bit of time to make more of that uh, shot at goal there. The big fellow, Saverio Rocker. First time I've seen him burning. What I'm impressed with is his power. Gee, he's got some strength, hasn't he? Well, for a young player, he's just enormous, isn't he? Look at the size of him, uh, Bruce. He's just terrifically built. 100 uh, kilo, uh, not kilo, kilograms. 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 This is a big man. McDermott's handball was good to pays. Krasiska, clever, kept it in. Bangs it back to centre half forward. Stasevich had to sit and wait. Ross takes the mark at the back. It's an excellent duel, this one, between two teenagers who would be holding high hopes, the pair of them, for their respective clubs to make a great career out of football. Tregenza, smart. Still smart. Probably should have taken it that time. He did get a good bounce this the second time, I felt. He wanted to go again with a tap on. But he's gained about 30 metres anyway. Well, he really needed to take the hand pass, didn't he, Bruce? That was the, uh, the critical one that he missed. Moncourse and Micken. Moncourse wins clearly. High kick. Might have been touched off the boot. I think it was by the way Smart went for the thumb. France is very clever. It was a free kick. It'll come back. Oh, no. It goes to Jarman. I thought to throw. Yeah, I, thought right cool. I thought it might have been in the back. But Jarman goes to Bickley. Quick hands, but uh, not such effective that time. Miss McDermott. And it'll be a ball up in the centre square, but as Dennis said, as Adelaide's uh, been attacking quite consistently here at three goals to two points. Fantastic, Chris McDermott. Sliding in there, great courage again. Averaging 32 possessions a game this season, number one in the AFL. Here's Jarman. High kick inside the attacking 50. Collingwood have got the numbers. They'll bring it away once more. Richardson chips it out wide to Gaper. McGuan is on down the ground. He's got it now. McGuan's on the wing. Turner running inside him. Rocker comes on the lead. He'll go to Rocker. In front, but only with his step on Ross. It clears the pair of them. And behind McMullen can't control it, so a boundary throw in. Really, from that position, the lead from Rocker must be more, more directly down the centre of the yes. ground, Dennis. I know he's only a youngster, 18 years of age. I suppose that will come with experience. That's the easy option he took. He's got to demand more of the man with the ball when he's got that sort of time coming down the ground. Throwing in. Young Hart behind. Knocks it to his own advantage. He's a cool customer for a youngster across the goal face. Look at that. Here's Lee, opposite pocket to the outer side, Tregenza. Now he can run onto this, Shaw is coming to meet him. Well played, Simon Tregenza. Slaps it onto the advantage of Jarman. Jarman awards half forward and Hart. Great footy throws. Daryl Hart. Hodges at full forward, but Maynard running down to take the mark at the half forward flank. Well, both these players line up as loose men in defence, Bruce. Uh, Kosicka didn't have an opponent, neither did Maynard at the other end of the ground. It's a very strong mark under extreme pressure there from Francisco. The other interesting move, uh, Graham Wright is playing in the back pocket on Tony McGuinness. Obviously uh, some sort of worry about his uh, fitness. High ball right to the goal square. Hodges with a big fly. Monkhorst, free kick coming here. Could be to the Crows, to Micken, I think. Well, the umpire indicating that he there was a holding uh, infringement on Micken. And Micken goes into goal. The Magpies lead by 10 points, but Adelaide looking very good at the present time. Their attitude is terrific. They're taking the new ball. There's the bounce. Run down by Wren. Liptak. Maynard was pushed in the back to get the free. Maynard just forward of the wing. High kick down towards centre half forward from behind Hodges, hands to it, couldn't hang on. Richardson slaps it away. 
Eventually, it's McCartney who boots it out wide. Now McGuan having a remarkable season. Beautiful pass to Russell on the wing. McGuan runs on. McDermott runs hard with him. Great to watch even off the ball that pair. Meantime, Russell goes looking for Starsevich. Knocked away by Hart. Taken by Dacos. Oh, clever as you like. McGuan over the top to Rowe. A question of accuracy. He touches it down once. Ten metres out. Oh, brilliant defence. Ross. Ross hung back momentarily. Planted the seed of doubt. Then came. And that was wisdom beyond his years. He took a chance, didn't he? You could have gone over the top, but a uh, magnificent smother in the end by Jonathan Ross. Stirring stuff by the 18-year-old and gets a kick out of defence. Tregenza runs onto it. He's had a good first turn. Adelaide is doing very well. Micken and Richardson. McCartney, who's a bit of a pert lookalike. He's left foot out to centre wing. Krasiska. Tregenza run off at that time by Fraser. Hip and shoulder by Rowe. And out of play. What's this breeze worth, Bernie? Three or four? Just looking at the windsock, Bruce, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of breeze around at the moment, uh, especially the way they've attacked in this quarter, Adelaide. I wouldn't uh, think it'd be more than, much more than one or two. OK, so it's about all square then, you reckon? At three goals to one, two. McGuinness with some uh, penetration, which uh, supports your theory, Bernie. Rowe, left foot not very accurate, but there's a chance here. Lindner, quick handball it should have been. High tackle, free kick. Reflex handles the go to Hodges, but he didn't have the reflex, but he had the courage, and he gets a free kick. As we see, uh, Bruce Linden knew the tackle was coming. Gary Pert went high, expecting the hand pass to go over the top, but in the end, it was a poor tackle, Bruce. But uh, Gary Pert was, he, uh, was expecting the hand pass to go over the top, so he's jumping, trying to cut that off. From about 45 metres, difficult angle, it'll take an excellent kick. Rob Punny's given it a ride, it's close. You can't believe it. Well, you heard what he said. Even back in Adelaide you would have heard that. Not correct umpire, that's what the lips read, didn't they? Yes. They're very good at that, Bruce. <laughs> Just under six minutes. Recorded time, Pert. Gains about 70 metres. Done McCartney to Shaw. Smothered by Tregenza, slapped on by Shaw. Tregenza did very well to tie it up out there. We've got a boundary throw in. I think the umpire said, have a look at the paper tomorrow. Uh, Bruce, you'll see what it was. It's a great conversation by the sound of it. I'm sorry I missed it. There goes Hart, down towards half forward. Coming up to meet the ball is Nicken. And it's paddled across the boundary line. So a throw in out there. And the Crows have done the bulk of the attacking. Colling would have had a little more system when they've gone forward. Monkhorst in front will get the kick. Plays on immediately. McCartney from half-back. Towards half-forward, Russell up in front. Oh, brilliantly read by Turner. He can score from here. He runs to the 50. He's inside the 50. Not a very good effort. He didn't settle at all. No, he didn't straighten up, did he? Uh, Dennis at all. He just kept on that same line, running towards the forward pocket. Made a very difficult for him to uh, bring that ball back. Lee for Adelaide. Drop punt to half back. Rends his target, front spot. Moncos at the back of him. McGuinness off the ground towards uh, centre wing. Francis running it over and it'll be a ball in. South Australian along with uh, Russell. Coming across in the Premiership year. Well played by Takos. Or was it Rowe? Now McGuan. Left foot centering. Ross in a good position here. Oh, well played Rocker. Good defensive work by Lee though. Bickley and Russell. A great take, Bickley. Russell's tackle excellent, holding the body. Well, it was a pity the uh, probably the defensive thing to do, Bruce would have been to pop it off the ground. He had the confidence to go with the pickup. The pickup was clean, but uh, Russell's tackle was too good in the end. Not a good kick, but well, I say not a good kick. It's fallen straight into Rocker's own hands. And this boy can kick for us if you haven't seen him before. Peter McKenna is very impressed with this boy's kicking style. I would say he'd have no problem making the distance from there, just outside the 50 metres. The rookie. Massive legs. 100 kilograms is... Uh, Bernie told us earlier, 
28 goals in his 10th match. Collingwood has been criticised for its lack of goal scorers. And this win could be the long-term answer. 50 metres out, drop punt goes bang. He's kicked it a long way and he's kicked it through for a goal. Longhorst over the ball, Jarman goes off the ground, soccers it out wide. Lip tack, has he got the pace? No, he hasn't. Sliding in there was Richardson. Comes to Gaper. McGuan on his knees. Nick McGuan on the wing. Look at the characters of football. Dacos, high kick, down towards half forward. We've got the numbers, the Crows. Wren was up, couldn't hang on. Have a whistle. Bounce at centre half forward for Collingwood. Just under two and a half minutes remaining till quarter time. Ground in very good condition. The smart kicks towards the middle and row. They couldn't control it. Richardson was held without it. He'll get the free. Plays on immediately. Francis, best in Paris last season. Came across from Norwood. Boots it out wide. Stasevich in trouble and lacking support. Maynard. Regenza boots it towards Micken on the lead. And Micken, despite what I said earlier, has been a handy player in the last 10 minutes or so. Kick number five for Micken. He's done pretty well at centre half foot. Rednack couldn't hang on to the kick. Gaper in the grass. Gets the kick to midfield. Russell storming up. Applies the tackle on Wren. Crashing his way through there was Bickley. Comes across to McDermott. Hurried kick inside the attacking 50, but Perth the only man there. Graham Wright. Centre wing, Russell just chipped in between Jarman and Lee. Eighth kick coming up for Russell, squares it to Turner. It's his uh, sixth possession, McGuan. Tenth possession, round the body, missed by Hart, then sits, waits. High tackle, it looked. Dacos clever. And it'll be a ball up. It did appear to be a suspect tackle on uh, Shaw and Wren. The tackle from behind. Either in the back or maybe high, Bruce. Inside the last minute. Adelaide wanting to hold Collingwood here. If they can get away with 4-1, to one, they'll be reasonably satisfied. But another goal would be damaging. Dacos around the body. Ross takes the mark. Adelaide should hold them up now. Back to Jarman. He's had a very good first quarter. Half back. Tregenza with real pace against Fraser and running it out of play. So we're now down to 30 seconds. Rocker and McMullen, the goal scorers for Collingwood. Both have got two and Mickens got the goal for Adelaide. Wren pushed out of it. Not sure what that was a kick. Centre wing. He's kicked it straight to Monkhorst. Takes it clearly, but uh, Collingwood will be beaten by the siren here. Krasiska's handball to centre wing. And there it is. So quarter time, Collingwood leads 4-1-25 to Adelaide 1-3-9. One to one three. The Magpies, McMullen has two and Rocker has two. And the solitary goal scorer for the Crows is Mark Micken. Don't forget Sports World coming up tomorrow morning on SAS 8.30. That's central time with Bruce McAvaney. Sports World tomorrow morning. Graham Corns making a point to Rod Jamison. As we go down to Max Stevens, I think Max is back from the respective huddles. Max, what about that breeze down there? Well, you're right, Dennis. In commentary, yourself and Bruce were talking about the wind. It has changed direction slightly. It's now blowing uh, still across the ground, but sort of more right down to the middle, the um, outer side pocket. So I'm sure that'll favour Adelaide this quarter. Now, Graham Corns has told the pros they've got to settle down, stop Collingwood's running players if they're at all going to get back into this game. He's asked them to play the outer side side of the ground and keep that ball moving as quick as possible pretty simple but he does believe they can get back into the ground uh, back into the game at victoria park thanks max around the league then melbourne trail hawthorne geelong lead essendon that first score incidentally melbourne and hawthorne a progress score the others quarter time scores brisbane in front of footscray and north melbourne disappointments over the season lead fitzroy Start of the second term then at Victoria Park. 16 points the Maggie's way. 
Monkhorst gets it down. Lidner couldn't control it. It comes to Hart. Ben Hart. Long kick down towards half forward. Adelaide have had plenty of the ball so far in this game. This is White knocking it out towards the boundary. Lip tack in pursuit. And out of bounds it goes. It'll be thrown in. It shows what Adelaide think of uh, Ben Hart. They've given him the job on Peter Dacos. He's had the big job uh, most of the year. Bernie's been on Dacos. Lockett. It's an uh, enormous task. Quick kick by McCartney. It's a centre wing. And he stood up for them very well. Just 18 years of age. So Collingwood in front of four, one to one, three. Very competitive opening term. Red versus Monkhorst. Dacos. McDermott. He was uh, just shaded in the first term by McGuan. McGuan to bring it back now. One of the Brownlow medal favourites, Mickey McGuan. Tony McGuinness and Chris McDermott amongst the favourites playing for Adelaide today. And McGuan the standout for Collingwood. Ring giving a free kick away to Monkhorst. His career looked uh, shaky, Monkhorst last year and early this year and he's made a splendid recovery resurrected it here's right centering kick good kick two to the goal square rocker was in the front spot lee read it beautifully handball was clever smart running away from half back to center wing lindner outnumbered gafer snared by right kicked his balance well free kick graham right has uh, had some injuries this season important Collingwood player Wren in the front should take it Ross was at the back Wren took it comfortably arguably the most promising of the young big men in the competition that's if you uh, admit that Scott Wind has already made it as a fully fledged star Wren's uh, on the way up Linda left foot Hodges on a lead hasn't uh, had a kick today Scott Hodges 11 goals last week Richardson's kicked to Monkhorst he just has to sit and wait for it now Ben Hart sits on him Monkhorst probing handball was a good run McCartney's not so good missed by Linda Ben Hart well played not a good kick missed by Turner Gafer under pressure Turner with a chance to recover squeezes the kick to Perth to Richardson could go to Fraser or Shaw had a choice Tony Shaw has Fraser inside him McGuan he goes to McGuan over the top to Fraser Fraser from centre wing to Russell Russell shrugs its first tackle but caught great tackle it was by Lee and Adelaide away Tregenza McDermott bounce was okay lip tack fairly hot one to take lip tack did it all right Jamison could go for it from here Handball okay. Tregenza can go for goal. Props it up to the goal square. Hodges outnumbered. Monkhorst gets back and takes the mark. He's doing a great job getting back and helping out Gary uh, Pert in defence there. The big fellow Damien Monkhorst. Pert's kick just in play and now out. So Adelaide attacking promisingly there, but uh, Tregenza unable to get quite enough on it. And Monkhorst getting back, as Bernie Quinlan said, as he's done all day. Mickle wins the tap. Lip tax take was very good. The handball okay. Jarman tried to go round Shaw. Got it back to Maynard. Should have got a free kick. Lip tag off the ground. Francis a quick kick. Adelaide can have the numbers here. Russell. Wren. Oh, well played. Jarman's handball okay. Now McGuinness can go for it. Left foot. Bang. Up towards full forward. Hodges and Pert. Well played by Pert. Off the ground row. Hits the post. Unlucky. A behind. Point to Stephen Rowe. And Adelaide go to 1 4 to 4 1, 25 to 10. Gary Pert, who's uh, had the best of the duel so far with Scott Hodges, to half back McCartney. Free kick going to Wren. McCartney thought it was his, I think. Now Wren's short kick okay to McDermott. Long way out, about uh, 55 metres you'll kick from. A breeze behind him. Hodges provides the first lead. McDermott's kick is good for distance. It's right there, but it's a behind. And Adelaide go up to 1-5 to 4-1. A few touches already for Chris McDermott. Five kicks and five hand passes. Playing on uh, Mickey McGuan, who's had uh, six kicks and five hand passes. 
Hook goes to the outer side. Wren gets a fist on it. Linda waiting in front. 60 metres out from goal. Liptak couldn't control it. Richardson must get a four. He didn't have the ball. And great courage by Richardson throwing his body over the ball. This is Pert up from fullback. Drives it towards the other side wing. Russell was held. He'll get the free kick. Happened off the ball. Scott Russell. Going for distance down towards right half forward. Not a particularly good kick. Holds up in the breeze. Smart gets a fist on it. Wren. Quick hands. Lee in trouble. Scrambles a kick forward. Got it to Bickley. McGuinness sold into trouble. Played it pretty well. So did Shaw though. Brilliant pick up Lidner. Bursts away, kicks towards centre half forward on the lead. Hodges. Hodges has it directly in front, about 45 metres out from goal. Well, we saw how far Rocker kicked that ball in the first quarter, so Scott Hodges shouldn't have any trouble with the distance. 45 goals so far this season. Kicked 30 in 13 matches last season. Distance shouldn't be a problem, and neither is direction. And right in this match at 2-5 to 4-1. Maynard after Jamison's handball was good. Burt makes a mistake. Hodges has handled a row. Left foot running, running, running. Right gets back. Cuts it off a behind. Had a chance in the run that one. So point to uh, Adelaide at 2-6. Stephen Rowe who came on. Well, Liptak, sorry Bruce. Liptak also off for Adelaide. He's been replaced by Daryl Hart. Hart was injured last week. In fact, both the Hearts were injured last week. And Adelaide's whopping 91-point win. Wren in the front spot. Linda. Oh, three kicks played. Play on. Good take by Dacos. Very clever. And left foot. High one. It's a centre wing. Jarman. Good mark. Terrific mark by Andrew Jarman. He's had an excellent uh, second half of the season. High drop punt. Hodges on a long lead. Makes a contest of it. McDermott, quick handball. Rowe, unable to quite get there. And if there is a criticism of Rowe's game, he's given three free kicks away today. That's one, two, three. And that was a third of them. Wright takes it at half back. A little chip pass. Holling would have got the numbers further afield. Tregenza scuttles to the ball, though, and pushes it across the boundary line. Good work. Throw in down towards right half forward for the Adelaide Pros. We're matching Collingwood. In fact, eight scoring shots to five. Micken did pretty well twice there. Row slung. It goes close to the boundary line and bounces out of bounds. So Collingwood very much with a game on their hands at the moment. From behind, Jamison flies very high. Richardson did well. McGuan, according to the umpire, not in the back of Jamison. And it will be a bounce. Graham Corns, his second season with the Crows. As I said at the outset, a win today. After two seasons, his record will be 22 and 22. Juan. McDermott with great courage against Fraser. Francis slides in there as well, and he's going to get a free kick. And rightly so. Great desperation from Tony Francis. He's up from halfback. He plays on Prusiska, the defensive side of the wing. Probing kick towards half forward. Smart did very well. It was body to body to begin with, and he won front position. And then really stretched, didn't he, effectively to take a finger tipper. Back into the centre square. Linda was in the front spot, decided in the end not to go. Jarman looks around. See him working all the time. Lee's left foot kick to fall forward. Hodges off. Good attempt there. Not paid. Free kick to Adelaide, surely. High tackle on row. That's a great attempt for the mark there by Scott Hodges, almost. He just didn't control it long enough as he fell to ground. He seemed to be completely out of position as he went for this mark. And he's gaining in uh, confidence the further he plays uh, AFL football, Bruce. 11 goals last week, a great performance. Conditions really uh, not suited to a full forward today. A little bit breezy. Important kick here for Rowe. Drop punt. Just hooks it slightly and hits the post. So it's the second time he's hit the post. That one uh, from what seemed to be a reasonably easy shot from about 35 or 40 metres out. So will Adelaide pay for its inaccuracy at 2-7 or 4-1? It's no question they've had the better of the match. In terms of play, Ben Hart at the back. Tony Shaw, well done. 
very well done. Turner, McCartney, to Dacos. A little one to McGuan. Another little one to the space with Russell to run onto it. Got a lovely bounce. And the snapshot's a magnificent goal. One on France is unable to do so. McCartney one-hander against Micken. It's an important period here. Six minutes to go. If Adelaide can kick another couple, they deserve to be four in front. They lead by one. Well played, Krasiska. To do it over the back of Wren. Now here's Smart, who's uh, really been on top of Stasevich. Good shepherding by Adelaide, by Lee on that occasion. Smart's kicked back to half forward. Micken did pretty well at the back. Played the defender's role there and put it out of play. I think Lee Matthews would have a few concerns sitting up in the uh, coach's box today, uh, Bruce, at this stage of the game. 5-3-5-9, five, five, no question about that. Micken in a wrestling match. Now Rowe, McDermott, quick left foot. Oh, courage, Turner. It was going to be a hard one all the way. He was against uh, the run of play and he ran back and he kept his eyes on it. Now there's uh, Daryl Hart and Graham Wright. They were off the footy a bit about 15 metres away from this mark Turner 30 years of age he's played 10 games this season he's played the last four, he struggled a bit with injury early, Moncourse not paid Maynard, McDermott he's getting a lot of touches in this quarter Jamison, Jarman the target he's got it now running on his uh, row Tony Woods is on for Collingwood also uh, Bruce Stasevich coming off also, McEwen coming on for Collingwood. Jarman goes for a torpedo, doesn't really get it, and kicks it out on the floor. So he'll be disappointed with that. He's had 12 kicks and five handles, Jarman. McEwen on, Stasevich off, Woods on for Collingwood, so Matthews is ringing the changes. But to Jarman, very much a focal point with McDermott. They're the centre of the Adelaide engine room. On course, tries to hook it behind. Jarman, quick hands to Wren. Just outside the 50. Maynard, so off and up the ground. Trigenza from 60 metres out, short to the pocket. Nicken. Now he's in a good pocket for a left footer. The ankle open up for him here. Yeah, he McEwen's gone to full forward, uh, Dennis. And uh, Rock has been brought up the ground. Nicken. Interesting effort, that one bounds on the ball alongside him. Well, that's one of the worst kicks you're ever likely to see, I'd say. Uh, from the big bloke there, Mark Micken. Disgraceful attempt at goal. Well, he was saying to himself, start it left and pull it back right. He did that. Very little left in it, though, as the ball comes from McGuan. And the mark is paid to Maynard, great aerialist. Maynard with Wren on. He should have gone to Wren. He yep. centres the ball. It's a high kick. Hodges, up he goes, it falls to Jarman, Bacon, goal square, will it run on? Mickey McGuan gets back, bring around the Rosie and away he comes, McGuan towards the outer side, Turner, and here come the Magpies, runners everywhere on the outer side, Shaw's got it, confronted by McGuinness, and got away from him, Trigenza read the kick off the boot though, draws a man, or tried to, into the path of Jarman, the kick wide of the mark, intended for Hodges on the lead. It slides out of bounds in the pocket. That's twice Tony Shaw has given it away. And Tregenza on both occasions has been the player that's cut it off. He's read it well. What about Jarman? He's had 20 touches, 14 and 6. Now Micken and McCartney. Richardson towards right. And allowing it to run out. So McDermott with 16 touches, Jarman with 20, McGuan's had 17 and Shaw has had 10. Big playmakers in the respective teams. Oh, Micken should get a free kick. He will. Has to. He was taken high by McCartney. No doubt about that, Bruce. Well, he's kicked one goal and uh, we saw his last attempt. And here's the free kick again. Whack. Second time Mark's had uh, Mark Micken's been hit across the face in this match and he kicks from 25 metres out drop punt it's very close I think it's a goal the guys get the next goal they need it McDermott crashes through setting the standard gets it across towards Lee down towards half forward again Micken quick get to Rowe just inside the 50 pulls it back oh what a clever kick oh he was on 
He flirted with it. He didn't go, says the umpire. And yeah. Jarman has this one 35 metres out directly in front. And you back a quality player like Andrew Jarman. Watch this kick. Well, he plays superb team football when playing at the best Adelaide. We see that kick around the corner there. Jarman did take one step. He's kept it. 18 points the difference. What a quarter of football by the Adelaide Tri. Six goal term. And Stephen Rowe, superb play, getting the ball back there to uh, Jarman. He didn't blaze away, he looked at his options. And superb use of the ball, getting it back there to Jarman, staying, uh, standing by himself in the middle. Maybe a change there too, I think, uh, Bruce. Maybe Mickey McGuan now playing on Jarman. I think he is. And, sure and Tony Shaw sure on uh, McDermott. Just a little switch. Jarman and McDermott have been magnificent. Fraser out of the centre. Collingwood needs a goal before half-time. What a quarter by Adelaide. Smart. And an exciting team. Jamison at centre wing to centre half forward. Lindner sits down. And Gaither was the only one to go in the end. I think Lindner did the right thing because Mickham was there with McCartney. And he was looking for an off-hand. But uh, Gaither was able to just squeeze him and take it. And he goes out to centre wing. Oh, Chris is for a big fly and a black grab. Has he hurt himself, I wonder? Back from injury. Gives it away in a hurry. Woods. Quick kick to half forward. Not good. Taken by Smart, who's been excellent. He's got a lot of mates that have been excellent around him today, too. So Smart from half back. Up to centre wing. McGuinness. Free kick paid to the Crows out there. Inside the last minute. So I need to hurry. Empire's not too uh, willing to play the advantage today, uh, Dennis. A couple of occasions. That one particularly, they had a big chance that he awarded that. Now the clock restarts. 40 seconds to go till half time. Centering kick. Up was Nick and not paid the mark. Garland has been superb. Rowe, quick hands to Pays. To half. Just outside the 50, Ben Hart goes long. It's not bending back sufficiently, nor did have the distance. On course, the defensive mark. Releases Francis now in the pocket. He runs it out to half back. Collingwood would have done very little attacking in this turn. He kicks to the wing. Trudenza gets back. He's got plenty of support. He needs it now. Hart tries or thought about going off the ground, but in the meantime, Trudenza has been penalised. Turner will get the free kick. Wait for the siren though, it's half time at Victoria Park and Adelaide have played one of their best terms of the season. Quite outstanding football and they lead at the major break, 7-9 to 5-3. Well, terrific stuff by Adelaide. 12 scoring shots to three in that turn by Adelaide. They kick 6 6 to Collingwood 1 2. And uh, Hodges, the focal point up forward. Smart's been tremendous, but uh, Dennis Jarman and McDermott set the pattern in the centre square. Yes, well, they are key players to Adelaide. They handle the ball a lot, and today has been very precise, particularly in that quarter. They used the ground so well. Interesting with that kickback from Rowe. He played for Norwood, if I'm not mistaken. And that is, I think, one of the keys to their football. It has been for a number of years. That space, about 15 metres from the kickoff line. He had a look, he pulled it back, and that was the most valuable goal to stretch their lead to what it is now, 51 to 33 at half time. Picking the goal scorers for the Crows, three to Hodges, two to Micken. And Rowe has the other, along with Andrew Jarman. And for the Magpies, two apiece to McMullen and Rocker. And the other goal scorer has been Scott Russell. Well, I suppose you look at that first half of football, Bernie Quinlan, it would seem as though the team playing for the double chance is not Collingwood, but the Adelaide Crows. Well, their form has been impressive, hasn't it, Dennis, over the last five weeks. So they did have to, they did come into this game with some sort of a chance, as we saw the performance last week against Geelong was leading up to something special and they've really produced that in the second half of the season. Well those on ball is quite outstanding particularly in that second quarter. Yes magnificent uh, the likes of McDermott, Jarman has played an outstanding half of football, the forward line has been good, Hodges with three goals in that quarter, the back line they've put Hart on Dacos he's done the job, Smart has had Stasevich taken from the ground and uh, Jonathan Ross even though Rocker kicked a couple of early goals has been very steady a couple of very important players especially that smother that he put on in the first quarter was terrific and Sean Wren, certainly an emerging player as we take a look at these stats to half-time. 
Well, you would expect Adelaide, as they uh, had 12 shots to three in that quarter, to be well on top in the stats area. And they have. They've really got on top in the handballs here. Terrific handball side, as we see, 67 to uh, 50 in that area. What other stats are very important there? Dennis hit out 16 to eight. Sean Wren getting on top in the ruck division. And centre breaks just slightly in favour of Adelaide. But they have a fantastic band of midfield players, and they use the ball very well when they do get it. Their team play, when they're playing at their top, is as good as any team playing in the AFL competition. Well, so much riding on this game. Do you think we can get back, Collingwood? Well, it's not over yet by any means, but I would think at this stage it's going to be very difficult. There's a couple of players that just have had no influence on the game whatsoever, and the matchups that uh, Graham Courts has been able to arrange have worked very well. And I think Lee Matthews would have plenty to worry about at half time. And we've got plenty to look forward to coming up in the second half. Collingwood trailing by 18 points then. And now Stephen Phillips takes a look at one of the most fabled clubs, Collingwood, in the AFL. Shopfronts run the length of Johnston Street Collingwood these days, but at the turn of the century, this was one of the most notorious spots in Melbourne. Legendary power broker John Wren ran his famous tote under the nose of the law along this very stretch. Looking at Collingwood today, it's hard to imagine that this was one of the toughest suburbs in Melbourne. Hoddle Street is one of the city's major thoroughfares, packed with traffic avoiding the central business area. Sixty years ago, it was lined with boot factories, taking full advantage of the tanneries along the Yarra River. Only the odd boot factory remains. The river supplied plenty of clean, fresh water. It was the ideal site for breweries, and in Collingwood, there was no shortage. It was here that Foster's Lager had its birth. There was the Yorkshire Stingo, and the Abbotsford as well. Today, Carlton and United still have one of their bases by the Yarra. Named after Lord Nelson's contemporary, Admiral Collingwood, the suburb was outside the jurisdiction of the city of Melbourne, and thereby escaped the stringent building regulations of the day. Timber cottages were cheap to build, and with no restrictions on size, were erected in their thousands. They would quickly become the slums of the city, and over the last few decades, many have been ripped down. The football club was born here at the Grace Darling Hotel, one of the oldest bluestone pubs in the area. Born as Britannia, it would become Collingwood in 1892 and join the VFL on its formation in 1897. Collingwood has always been one of the mainstays of the league. With 14 premierships to its credit, the Magpies are still the only club to have won four flags on end. Under the leadership of coaching great Jock McHale, Collingwood would be unchallenged from 1927 to 1930. The area was a breeding ground for football greatness. The old Collingwood Tech boasted old boys of the calibre of Des Fothergill, Lou and Ron Richards, Marcus Boyle, and even test cricket great Neil Harvey. As a youngster, premiership captain of the future Lou Richards grew up here in Park Street and kicked his footy with his mates at Garns Reserve behind the town hall. It was here at the old town hall that Richards, like so many of his teammates in the 30s, 40s and 50s, would meet his wife-to-be. The face of Collingwood has changed dramatically over the last few decades, from Smith Street in the west to Clifton Hill in the north, to Victoria Parade in the south and the Yarra River along its eastern boundary, Collingwood has become a new working man's suburb housing many Asian newcomers to Australia. Its football team has never really changed. In 1990, it won its long-awaited premiership, ending a 32-year drought. Back in May, Collingwood celebrated its centenary, fittingly meeting Carlton at the MCG in front of 80,000 wildly enthusiastic footy fans. It was a night that footy fans won't forget even though for most of them, their beloved magpies lost to the Blues. For the first time in 1992, more than one million fans have made the turnstiles click over to watch one team. Who else but Collingwood? And now, that team with a long and proud tradition is preparing to add another chapter to its history as it tunes up for yet another finals campaign. 
Well, we've got to say it's looking a little shaky at the present time, but round 24 overall providing a great finish to this 1992 AFL season. We'll be back to check around the league right after this. Round 24, in fact, started last night at the SCG. The battle for the wooden spoon, the Sydney Swans up against the Tigers. Well, Sydney, it's been a terrible finish to the season for them. Here are some of their lowlights. Richmond out of trouble. From half back in towards McQueen, does it well. Trapped it nicely, then kicks long in towards full forward. Here's a chance for Hogg. Possession now, off the night, should be a goal. Lewis, still in trouble. Tries to flick it okay. wide, and the fingertip mark is going to be paid. Richmond called to play on. Hogg sweeps it long. Now here's a chance for the Tigers. 40 metres out. Shot at goal, looks pretty good by Stephen Jackson, and it is. Now, sets it up for his forward, Simon Mitten-Connell back. Oh, oh, great marks, Mitten-Connell. Well, what a sensational mark, Simon. Well, he's kicked one, and he is directly in front as he slams at goal and puts it through. They you know, James? They were. They've had a lot of injuries. True, yes. Luff has it now and he goes to half forward Lewis was he doing the holding the umpire says Dale Lewis you have the football Lewis from 50 metres the loping left foot kick looks pretty good looks very good no mark to Richmond or oh, how they see that the umpire play on now a chance for Dale Lewis from 40 metres oh I think it's another one yes it is four goals the margin is it going to be more? Is it going to be five from Wayne Campbell? Relief for the Tigers then. Sydney lose 15 in a row to conclude their season. Richmond 18-17, Sydney 13-17. The margin there, 30 points. Well, a terrific round this one. Of course, that big game coming up tomorrow at Subiaco Oval, but plenty of action going around as far as Melbourne is concerned today. Four other games along with this one at Victoria Park. Hawthorne needing to win to make the finals, as you can see. Lead Melbourne. Not much in that game, though. Geelong against Essendon. The Cats lead 7-5 to 3-7. Billy Brown has four goals in that game. Simon Madden limped off the ground early at Waverley. Footscray after a sluggish start lead the Brisbane Bears 9-7 to 5-2 and big news from this game Scott Wyand is off with a knee injury and that could have serious repercussions hasn't been cited on the bench since he left the ground Fitzroy trail North Melbourne Wayne Carey has four goals in that game at Prince's Park so half time at Victoria Park and the Crows lead it by 18 points we'll be back with all the second half action right after this Dennis Graham Corns as one would understand was delighted with that second quarter he said they moved the ball better and using the outer side definitely paid dividends but he would like to believe the Crows should be further ahead a few opportunities went missing and when kicking for goal that's when Adelaide should settle and not rush in summing up Corns told his side they have put themselves in a winning position and it's up to them to continue just on the injury front Matthew Liptak has a lower back problem and may not take any further part in the game Max Stevens on the boundary Start this third term. Adelaide 7 9, Collingwood 5 3. And the crowd finding voice now, realizing the gravity of the situation as far as their magpies are concerned. McDermott to Jarman. We've seen a lot of that so far. Gaper robbed of the ball. Wren slaps it down towards half forward. Rose got the run of it. Strong tackle, Stasevich. Could have almost been holding the ball. It comes to McDermott. Very high kick that hangs in the breeze. They come from all directions. Hodges. Put his hands to it, couldn't hang on. Richardson, Woods kicks it towards the outer side. Tregenz is over the ball. Rowe again, was busy in the second term. McGuinness breaks away. Kicks down towards the pocket. It falls in short once more. Lidner almost the mark. Gaper stood in the tackle. This is Perk in the back pocket with some time and space now. Perk drives it around the outer side. Well-weighted kick. McGuan didn't break stride. He's away now, surrounded. But he kicks it down towards half forward. Storming up the ground is Hart. Untimed bounce. He left it behind. Brilliant pick up McEwen. Snaps it. Only gained about 25 metres. Here's a chance for Turner though. 15 metres out. It's a goal. Collingwood start well for the second half with a goal to Jamie Turner. Yes, but Dennis, if anything, that Breeze has got stronger in this uh, second half. The uh, 
wind really howling across Victoria Park. Interesting, McEwen playing at full forward. Dacos in the pocket alongside him. The two players, McMullen and Rocker, both with two goals apiece in that first half, are both sitting on the interchange bench. The start, Collingwood wanted 6 3 7 9. Wren, who did some uh, brilliant work a moment ago. Good tackle by McDermott. A great tackle. The other thing, McCartney now playing at centre half forward. Starts a bit centre half back to Collingwood. Maynard the target. Krasiska to cut him off. And rolls it out. Yes, it was interesting. You mentioned Rocker and McMullen. They kicked four of Collingwood's five goals in the first half. The other one was a freak goal by Russell, and they started on the interchange here. But uh, McEwen and Dacos have done the job in a number of matches in the past. Fraser off the ground. Rose handballed and McGuan was good. McGuan's kicked to full forward. McEwen and Ross. McEwen running underneath it. Dacos versus Hart. McEwen again. Caught. Dacos goes back. McCartney to the goal square. A one-out battle. Well played by Bickley against uh, Russell that time. And Adelaide did very well to hold it up. Bernie, you'd expect the Collingwood charge early in this third quarter. They would have been desperate to get out and have another crack at Adelaide. There's no doubt, Bruce, this is a very important term as far as Collingwood is concerned. Kicking with the breeze in this quarter, they really must get the goals on the board if they are to have any chance at all against the Adelaide Crows. Wren tapped it forward. Tregenza having a good match. Jonathan Ross, the kick around the body. Maynard. Francisca runs him into the ground, gives a free kick away. Now the advantage is played to McGuinness. He's trying to weave his way through. Changes direction a couple of times. Kick ineffective. A poor one. Stasevich, who was outplayed in the first half as a forward. Back to Richardson. At half back. Little kick to Francis. He didn't have a big impact in the first half. Plays on with a high drop punt. Oh, pays free kick. Turner hanging on and uh, pays to take it. Well, Turner really worrying more about the man than going for the ball there, Bruce. And uh, terrific play by Adelaide. They're really had eyes for the ball only. Lemna caught holding the ball the decision. Hayes put it in front of him. Lemna looking to go back into the play. And Wright too speedy for that. Wright just fought at half back. Towards half forward. Not a particularly good kick. Awkward one there for McCartney. It runs away from him and goes out of bounds. Throw in, right half forward for the Magpies. Who trail 6 3 to 7 9. Wren in front. Falls to Bickley. Hurried kick towards the wing. Gaper didn't have it. Francisca. Advantage is paid once more. Montforce. Now Shaw to Francis. Over the head though. He's made some bad mistakes today. Tony Shaw. McGuinness made one there. He gave the ball away to Fraser who doesn't punish the Crows. This is Lee, towards the outer side. Tregenza leads back in the race momentarily. Well played by Fraser, but he's outnumbered out there, two to one, Maynard over the top. And Fraser tied it up effectively for Collingwood. The other change for Collingwood, uh, Graham right now playing on the wing against Jamison. He did play the first half in the back pocket. He's just picking McGuinness up when McGuinness was uh, resting there. Now Smart, from half back, Micken underneath it, Moncourse at the back, oh great mark at the back. Just uh, able to stretch over Micken that time. Squares it to Gafer, try to half volley, gets around row, then uh, kicks it accurately, oh well played to Genza. The third time he snared the footy off the opposition, his handball wasn't good. Moncourse threw it, it should have been paid against him, it wasn't. To Genza's quick kick, Adelaide's got the numbers here, row, Pert. Still Pert, Hodges worrying him, Pert over the top of it, oh, holding it. Yes, he was right over the top of it, uh, Gary Pert, I agree with that decision. He did nothing to knock the ball out, he was happy to see the ball tied up underneath him. We see the free kick again, here it is. He grabs the leg here too. And he brings this. the ball back underneath him. He was in a little bit of strife, I think he did throw himself forward in the end. But once the player does pull the ball back underneath him, he can be in all sorts of trouble. Well, Hodges going for goal number four. This is a difficult kick into the breeze. Drop punt. Underneath is a good-looking kick. It could be a goal. He's just missed. Well, look at him. Can hardly believe it, but uh, it was going to be close. He's kicked 3-2, but both his points have been very close. 
Now Pert bangs it back in. It's been a terrific duel, the Pert Hodges duel. Uh, Maynard quick hands again to Tregenza. A brilliant handball inside. There's no question about that. Richardson did it well. From half back to centre wing. Bickley. Does nicely. Ran back to Bickley. Centre ring kick. Lindner on the lead. In the true centre half forward position. Goes looking for Hodges. Short of the mark. Chipping it in front. Woods takes the mark for Collingwood. Plays on immediately. And in rather untidy fashion. Hurt. Kept his head. This is Francis. Half back towards centre wing and Shaw. And goes to ground again. He's had a torrid afternoon off his hands and out of bounds. It'll be thrown in the defensive side of right centre wing for the Magpies, who trail 6 3 to 7 10. Very good game of football, this one, given the conditions. Not easy to play footy out there at the moment. Longhorst is up, gets it down. Bickley, he's had a very good year. Likewise, Maynard. And of course, this man, McDermott, probing kick to centre half forward. Collingwood in best position. Richardson takes the mark on his chest. He's played a great game for Collingwood in defence, Richardson. Tony Shaw, Kurt on the burst up through centre, long kick to half forward, working his way in front was Ross, McEwen can't control it, Dacos over the ball, always spells danger, Dacos went nowhere that time, they tied him up effectively and will have a ball up. And it's often a dangerous situation Dacos, he plays with those three kicks so very well, the two Adelaide players just held off him enough but still were able to tie him up. The one, the Imme, inexperienced, I should say, Hart, and certainly not immature, and the other, the experienced McDermott doing the job there. Bickley's kick back, good mark for Siska. That pushed him in the back. Took the mark. Centre square, McEwen in the goal square. Just looking for something for Siska. Now it goes bang towards full forward. Wren was uh, running against the play there and tapped away by Hart now to play. 17 shots to nine tells a story here today Wren and McCartney Wren's greater height Smart couldn't get it away Rowe left foot Ross McEwen's tackle was pretty good it's still in the danger zone pays still pays it's in play and Lee did very well to cut across. Dacos was the man. And Dacos in that pocket can be very dangerous. I don't think Lee could understand all that finesse from Hayes down there. He had the right idea. Get out of bounds very quickly. Wren doing much as he likes in there at the present time. Directed it down to Smart. He kicks it out of bounds on the bounce. Well, that's because Monkos is playing a kick behind the play, helping out in defence. And he's leaving it to uh, McCartney to do the ruck work on the forward line against yes. a much taller Sean Wren. Normally, that's the role of Starsevich, but he's in defence now, of course. Now the Ruckman touched the ball that time, which is a blessing for Collingwood. McGuan goes in short. Smart brings it away again. I think Collingwood fans hoping for a free kick there for Jamie Turner. Not forthcoming. This is Beckley with Dash coming away. Maynard so often found on the wing. McGuinness goes over the top. Jamison, look at the run. They're everywhere. Beckley. McGuinness, great footy by the Crows. It needs a finish. Well, floating through was Hodges, it cleared him, and goes out of bounds in the pocket. What a superb passage of play, though, by the Crows along this uh, wing here. Uh, six or seven hand passes. They run in support, they've got tremendous uh, handball exponents. McDermott, Maynard, Bickley and Jarman. Four players all in the top ten in the handballs in the competition. Monkhorst and Micken. Monkhorst may be winning it. Shaw looks for free kick, gets it against Jarman. Laid back on Jarman that time really worked the umpire and got it now Richardson to Woods and don't the Woods need a lift from half back McCartney the target Wren couldn't get back it was a floater in the end and floated straight into Rose arms now Fraser's provided some run here and so is McCartney Tregenza late Fraser couldn't hold it probably should have Tregenza smart Tregenza's handball well played Ross it's fortunate that Tregenza has got so much pace he was able to get back there and uh, put a real lot of pressure onto Fraser. It did uh, take a long time getting back there though, Bruce. Wren versus McCartney. Wren clearly smart. Cut off by Russell. He's been reasonably quiet. Did that very well to Rowe in the pocket. 
bit of a sharpshooter row across the face that time and hits the behind post on the full Adelaide kick that's when the banana kick comes in handy from that position even on the run a lot more players are using that banana kick from the pocket Breeze is getting quite strong blowing towards the left full forward pocket at the end of which Collingwood are going here's Jarman, Tregenza very busy around the ground he covers a lot of ground too Tregenza the Woods half forward Woods uncontested from a Fitzroy player has played on now puts it back towards the wing Collingwood have got the numbers out there good kick too he finds Fraser he plays on immediately not a particularly good kick awkward one for Hart though it comes to Dacos what can he manufacture here across the face he's slipping minor score let's kick two behinds this afternoon Peter Dacos 6-4 plays 7-10 there's the time remaining and Collingwood with a job in front of them Adelaide so competitive so often in their first two seasons in the competition could be approaching one of their best ever victories Wren goes in short here's Bickler across half back he plays on by hand Lee under pressure further appeal to Pays Pays comes away from half back towards midfield body to body Shaw and Jarman so much pass there Lidner with time McGuinness on the overlap storms through the middle probing kick inside the 50 Hodges in front fisted away but only as far as Jamison Bacon goal square right at the mark a real chance there for Jamison not much pressure uh, being applied by Collingwood the big thump away from Gary Pert Jamison last year's leading goal kicker for the Crows couldn't convert high one by Pert getting plenty of distance Wren and Stasevich Jarman and Shaw it's not quite Carl Lewis and Winfrey Christie now Fraser awkward kick oh good mark lovely hands by Hart quickly to Tregenza now McDermott will cre create some space here he'll kick it to him now McDermott at centre wing Fraser holds him up but Adelaide are doing the holding up on the scoreboard because Collingwood has got the breeze and Adelaide are holding firm McDermott to half forward oh Maynard nice mark quickly to Rowe oh not good play it was obvious the man was coming at him, Richardson. He just held on to the ball far too long. Took the extra two steps, didn't he? Yes, he did. Half forward, Adelaide attacking. A goal here would be very damaging. Micken wins the tap. Richardson, McGuinness with real pace. And again out of play. So, we've Adelaide done, in attack. He's done pretty well this quarter, McGuinness. He's really coming to his own. 13 and 3, Bernie. And the difference between he, Jarman, and McDermott is he has that explosive pace, doesn't he? Exactly. Linda couldn't control it. This is Francis. He has that sort of speed too. Hooks it towards the other side and Russell. Fraser storming through. Well played again by Russell. Across to Shaw who boots it to half forward. Unkind bounce for Turner. Here's Rowe inside the attacking 50. Crows closing on him but he's fast. Rowe pulls it back. Looking I think for Dacos and or this man drifting back McCartney. And McCartney it is who takes the mark only about 30 metres out from goal on a very slight angle. There were three players there, it would have mattered. McGuan was one of them. McGuan just at the back there waiting also. And the other player you called, Dacos, on the lead. McCartney, who's been a revelation in the second half of the season, mainly in defence, now on the forward line, playing at centre half forward. And what an important kick this is. He's put it through. That laid two behinds. Big crowd here. Really chanting for the Magpies now. But Adelaide has stood the challenge so far. Moncourse and Wren. Wren caught one then. Francis over the top. Free kick to Adelaide. Francis riding McDermott into the ground. If Captain Courageous cheered sums this man up, doesn't it? Yes, he's prepared to put the body in then, Bruce. Put the body on the line. That's the name of it, isn't it? Mick in the target. Look for a free kick. Linda. Out on the floor. Well, it was an option. He was under great pressure. Tried to bring it back. Stasevich. Short to Gaifer. Centre half back. Now, Montforce is loose. It's going to go the other side to McGuan. You'd have to 
to say that uh, McDermott and Jarman have just shaded McGuan and Shaw. And if you say that at the end of the match, Adelaide could well and truly win here. That could be the deciding factor. Which of those pair of four turns up to be on top at the end of the day? Bounce on the other side. 7-11 plays 7-4. Adelaide in front again. Decisive ruck work. McGuinness, though, forced the boot with his wrong foot. Luck was a fortune, though. It ricocheted up a Collingwood player. Went out of bounds on the ball. McGuinness. Defensive side of the wing. The breeze grabs it and pulls it down. Mickett was up in front. It was pistoled away by Stasevich. Off the ground by Francis. Slipping over was smart off. Brilliantly done. Great evasion. A body swerve on the deck, if you don't mind. Down goes Jarman. In goes Russell. Prasiska now. The crowd is roaring. Prasiska comes away from the middle. McGuinness gets to him. Alters the kick just marginally, but enough. Off target, but McEwen rakes it in one-handed. McEwen on the boundary in the left full forward pocket. Well, the pretty good play there, Dennis, was uh, Tony Shaw's tackle on Jarman. And Jarman appeared to be clear. McEwen runs around and misses to the near side. Well, the tempo in this game now has really lifted. Certainly in the last 10 minutes, but it's been a great game throughout. But now Collingwood taking it to Adelaide and the Crows are giving as good as they're getting. Michael Taylor a moment ago, reached in between John Halbert and then to Graham Thorne's free kick for Maynard. Yeah, push out by Francisco, an obvious free kick. So Maynard from half back. Six kicks and 12 handballs today. Danger was led by Francisco. So Maynard again. Take two. High one. Nickham and Smart at the back. Lindner unable to. Free kick to Shaw against Jarman. Just hanging on to him there. Gave him a little shove. It's a correct decision. But technically it didn't have much to do with the play, did it, Bruce? No. It's just off the footy. Shaw's kicked a half forward. Oh, big fly by McEwen. Smart, clever. Played it very, very well. McDermott to Bickley. To full forward Hodges. Getting a little shove from Perth. Richardson read it with uh, Stasevich. Hodges' tackle okay. Well, Richardson got through too easily. Much too easily in the end. A little one to Russell. Richardson has got a fine game. Russell at half back. Swings it out wide. Fraser Middles in the clear. Dacos comes on a lead. Fraser needs to release the ball. Now he does. Francis runs inside the 50. Plays the distance off target. Well... Well, that was out of bounds on the ball. And I agree, Dennis. I agree. It uh, just must have just shaved in, if anything. Adelaide has made another change. Hart off the ground again. Daryl Hart. And back on is Sean Tasker. Well, if you that score in mind, Collingwood win by a point. That would be very lucky. On the other side, the mark is held by Maynard. He's a good player, isn't he? He oh, contributes my favorites. week after week, Rod Maynard. Maynard from half-back. Kicks it high into the breeze, perhaps not the best policy. Mick it up in front. Shaw was mugged. Down goes Fraser, must get a free kick. Fraser, close to the boundary line. Five points the difference. The Crows lead. And we're down to 6.45, remaining in this third quarter. The Crows will go to the scoring end in the last quarter. Off hands, claiming the mark Lee, not paid. McDermott to the run of Smart, who's been very effective in this term. Kicks towards half forward. Tasker in front. Should be the man in front is. Has to be the man in front. Long cross. Playing the penalty, they're not fisting away. Tasker, centering kick. Hodges has it fisted away again. We've seen that many times. Jamison, though, 30 metres out. Nobody at home. It's a goal. It was a big one. That was the goal of Jamison. Against what's been happening in this term, Collingwood with a run at Adelaide. He's read the pert a couple of ways well today, Jamison. Shaw's played a big term. He's been able to get in front of Jarman in some crunch positions and win some very hard balls for Collingwood. McDermott smothered that time, but goes back again. Bruce had only been one goal kicked at that end of the at that end of the ground previously. That. Uh, Probably a flute goal, really, from Scotty Russell in the second quarter. It's 
Now that magnifies the performance of Jamison to get the goal. Lee looking for a free kick. McDermott gave it away to McGuan. McGuan very clever. Oh, good looking kick to Dacos. Drew hard underneath it. McEwen. Still McEwen. Round the body. Rolling off. Smart went for it. Missed it. Round the body by McCartney. Goal. His second. It's a terrific match. A thriller at Victoria Park. 8 6 to 8 11. There's two goals for the quarter to McCartney after being moved from centre half back. We see Dacos just leading hard under that play. We see McEwen a very bulky player and able to get around very well there. A centering kick. Just filling off uh, Nigel Smart. Well road there by Jason McCartney. This match being played at a terrific tempo. Well, McCartney got the goal, but you can't fault Smart. He went at the ball. He had to. Unfortunately, from Adelaide's perspective, Collingwood heads closer. The margin just five points now. Not forced against Wren. Wren gets it down, looking for Jarman. It comes to McDermott. Yeah, they've got some skill in the centre square, the Crows. Bickley, fumbled, took his eye off the ball. Could have been a free kick to Russell, who didn't have it. Packing it out of midair, there was Lee. Hayes goes back, down he goes. Oh, it's the quick and the dead at the moment. Lee scrambles it out towards the boundary. Colling would have got the numbers. Well, a roar every time the Magpies touch the ball now. The crowd willing them on for a higher finish. Turner's long kick slides across the face. Defiant fist from Ross. It falls to McCartney. And he's kicked the goal. Drill at the park, as we said earlier. 9, 6, 8, 11. Calling it back in front. McCartney with three goals in the turn. Hot course wins the tap. McDermott's been magnificent. But he missed that one. Russell's quick kick. Jamie Turner. Back to McGuan. McEwen. Ross with him. McEwen overrunning it. Ross trying to get it to Smart. McEwen wins it back. Right. Sizes up the options. A high one to full forward. Wren gets back and takes a terrific mark. Great, yeah, that was great courage. He is a very promising player, Sean Wren. Great mobility for a uh, player of his height. And vision to Ross. And he heads again to Ross, decided not to go. Goes long, Maynard. Now, Gape is hanging on to Maynard, surely. Had hold of his hand. Look at that. Yeah, the umpire didn't see it. Maynard not complaining, though, Bruce. Well, I think he was, Bernie. Was he? Looked at the umpire and said, why not? Well, not strongly enough, maybe. Well, maybe they're holding hands. It could have been a bit of uh, bit of both. <laughs> who, do you, who, who do you reckon would be holding on? Mickey Gay for Rodney Maynard. He'd be the favourite, Mickey Gay, but wouldn't that he? Tim's on. <laughs> Here's Francis to go for it with a drop punt. Dacos couldn't quite. McEwen has been pretty busy in this term. Handball out. Lee, or rather, pays to the boundary line and out of bounds. Well, Collingwood fans wanted it to be deliberate, so did the players. Brave umpire over there, not giving the free kick with that uh, sort of barracking going on. Well, it's like a final, and to Collingwood it is. Oh, there's a free kick to Smart. Oh. But not forthcoming. Emerging out of the pack is McCartney as he kicked another one. No, it'll come back. The umpire... That's the point. It was touched off the boot, was it? All that congestion about 15 metres out. Well, how he missed the free kick on Smart, I have no idea, but Adelaide... A reprieve there. McCartney almost his fourth goal for the term. Lee to the outer side. Monkhorst is up. Russell waiting in front. Bickley coming at him and the ball goes out of bounds. So we've got a throw in just outside the attacking 50 for the Magpies who lead 9-7 away to 11. We're set for a great final term. Wren. Just a marvellous player. Bickley towards the wing. Gaper gets a fist on it. Saying it's a virtual final for the Magpies, but why are Adelaide playing so hard? Well, they're playing for pride, and they've really found themselves in the last six weeks or so. And the chemistry is right. Things look terrific for next season. This man has taken this game by the scruff of the neck. Wren, he gives it to Lidner, who boots it down towards half forward. Stasevich is up, frames the mark. My advice would be avoid Wren going back. Kurt, still Kurt, left foot round the body, almost a one-handed Milk McDermott, not paid, McGuan sweeps the handball out, McCartney, he's uh, had a tremendous quarter, 
Francis. Oh, good kick in the end. It looked ordinary off the boot, but the uh, direction was fine to Fraser, to Rowe, to McGuan, to McEwen. Back to McGuan, a goal. Ten, seven, eight, eleven. A lot of handballs in the chain that time. And Mickey McGuan, who started the first of the long handballs off, gets it to goal. Rose has also been important in this uh, quarter, Bruce. We've seen some uh, enormous passion to the handball in this game. Adelaide over this side of the ground, Collingwood. Terrific running football by the uh, Collingwood players to finish that off. Goal to Mickey McGuan. 10 7 away to 11. Great work by the Magpies. Shaw over the shoulder. Pregenza hit hard. McDermott stood up in the tackle. Fires the hand pass away. Oh, great courage. Shown there by the Collingwood player. Guess who? Tony Shaw. Cannoning in there. Meantime, Bickley has it on the other side to McGuinness. Here come the Crows. Pregenza puts it down once. Kicks from the 50. Hodges works his way in front. Almost the mark. Pissed away by Pruitt. Out of bounds, it'll be thrown in, and the clock is down to 17 seconds. He continues to run with the ball out of bounds. Wait for the throw in. We're down to eight seconds. Something will need to happen quickly for the Crows here. On course with other ideas, heads for the boundary. Of course, he's oblivious to the time. Here's Rowe. The siren will beat them. McGuinness has got the ball. What a great quarter. And Collingwood coming back with great courage. 10, 7, 8, 11, three-quarter time. And the stage is set for a big finish at Victoria Park. They led by 16 points at quarter time. 67 to 59 now. For Collingwood, McCartney has three all in that term. And two each to McMullen and Rocker. And for the Crows, Hodges has three and Micken has two. Today's game is part of the Carlton and United Breweries 1992 AFL Premiership season. I think we've got to say the finals are looking great underway next week and still no certainty as to just how this final six will settle. Graham Corns realising this game is there for the taking as we go down to Max Stevens. Well, Dennis, that wind has really picked up here in uh, the centre of the ground, and that's going to be a great advantage to the Adelaide Crows. A simple message from Graham Corns, the same game plan as in the second quarter. Play the outer side, don't handball across the back lines, just kick it long and hard and use that outer side to your advantage. He told them just 20, sorry, just 30 minutes to go till the end of the season for the Adelaide Crows, and they can win here at Victoria Park if it's a committed effort by the eight players on the ground. A win here for the Crows would be something very, very special. Graham Corns very pumped in that break, uh, more pumped than I've seen him all season, and the Crows equally as pumped to take the points off Collingwood here in the park. Thanks, Max. The former champ, as you can see, really pumped up. That's Cornsy, not Max. Taking a look at these other matches around the league then. Hawthorne, Seam Home. Geelong have a fight on their hands at Waverley at the present time. And so too do the Bulldogs. So anything could still happen on the second day of round 24. Fitzroy and North Melbourne. Well, the Kangaroos lead that one. A terrific finale to the season. Another big game tomorrow. So Footscray struggling. Geelong struggling. The top two sides of Collingwood win here and we laid the scenario before the game Collingwood could finish on top if both those sides lose so many things still to happen and Adelaide I suppose if you're a betting man you take from here set to go for the final turn then at Victoria Park Collingwood lead 10-7 to 8-11 a terrific game all day Wren, who's been superb, gets it down. Francis couldn't control it. Gaither picks it up, dragged to the ground. McDermott, very high kick that carries on the breeze. Storming up the ground, Stasevich plays on by hand. Now Shaw with the job to do. Woods was held without it. He'll get the free kick up from right half back. To Tony Shaw, the boots are towards the wing. Wren, right mark. He earned it. There's yeah, seven marks to Sean Wren. Now the big man boots it back towards half forward. Mick in the target. Falls to Woods. Quick hands away to Francis. 
concedes some ground but gets it back to Richardson who boots it towards half forward for the Magpies Ren again telling hand pass over the top worth a kick McGinnis to Bickley who spins out of trouble once was taken high Rowe untidy tackle but hard to tackle a man who's spinning like that Bickley inside the attacking 50 all Magpies down there at Montfort and a half pack short to Siska. back in the Magpie team after an absence of three weeks half back just uh, looking for some options here Gaither now Perth's very wide if they want to go that way and that's the way it's going to go not a very accurate kick but Perth's got so much time it should be safe as a crisscross goes for a run or oh, takes a big chance oh. and gets away oh. how far did he go Wren to go back Russell first goal's vital here Fraser has to wait back to Russell the umpire gets in the road it's again so Russell goes for goal it holds up it bounces it hits the post oh. Regenza really must tighten up on uh, Fraser He's become a real playmaker for Collingwood in this second half. He tightened up on the umpire. Straight through him. He won't get the votes tonight, Dennis. No, I don't think so. Here's Ben Hart. Wren and Monkhorst. Gay for at the back. Oh, good handball by Russell. He was paid a free kick. It was play on Monkhorst. Oh, Ross did well. Hayes, Rowe, Ben Hart, caught, holding it. Threw it in the end. Free kick to McEwen. It'll come back. Against Hart. It was a terrific tackle by Ronnie. He has uh, been pretty good at full forward since coming on, hasn't he, Bruce? A rocker off the ground since half time. He did kick two goals in that first quarter, Severio Rocker, along with Ian McMullen. They've both been benched in this uh, second half. Here we see a very good tackle from McEwen, pinning one of Hart's arms. Made it impossible for him to get rid of the ball legitimately. Just two goals have been kicked to the left of screen all day. Is this number three? It is, I think. 59. Ren and Monkhorst again. Up they go. Francis virtually straight up in the air. Krasiska eyes only for the ball. Adelaide an opportunity here. Jamison with support all around him. Goes alone. As a result, the kick not particularly good. It bounces down towards the pocket. Pert under no pressure. Starsevich up towards half back. Woods has it now. A hurry kick bounces it straight out of bounds. Throw it on the wing. And I think that was the intention too, Dennis. He was off balance. He had uh, no other option. Went for the safety of the boundary line. Well, Colling would have found plenty since half time. Long course in front. McGuinness, Lister in pace. Runs it down towards half forward, then pulls it back towards the kickoff line. Big pack at the ball, at the ball, Hart, open goal, wide, very wide goes the kick. And it scuttles out of bounds in the right full forward pocket. And he's had a real chance there, Daryl Hart, he's been on and off the ground. Spent a bit of time on the interchange bench this afternoon. Mick and Monk, course, or oh, Mick and off the goal. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> Unreal. What a take, boss kick, did you say? Half of the course. What a clever goal. 11 8 to 9 11. Oh. I was speechless for a moment. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Mick and three goals for the afternoon. Have a look at this in replay. Body on body in the in the uh, boundary throwing contest. Goal of the season. Oh, God. magnificent. You, it's a fluke, of course, but uh, he was out of it. He really went to kick it. That's all he tried to do. But where it goes, it's anyone's uh, guess in the end. Except the goal umpire's burning. 11 8 9 11. What a goal by Mick and he's kicked three. Wren gets a free kick. Could this be the break Adelaide needs? Shocking kick down towards half forward. Woods under pressure. Scrambles it out wide. Now a foot race. Two real speedsters here. Fregenza battles against Fraser. Fregenza's kick only went about five metres. Woods, very high ball, gained about 25 metres. Rowe punches it away there from Maynard. McGuinness tidies up, McDermott back to McGuinness, they worked that one two so well and now Hart, Hart in open space, 55 metres from goal, Hodges wants it long, he obliges, Hodges and Perk, through for a minor score. 
Adelaide creep closer. 9-12, 11-8. Still stacks of time. Pert to the outer side. Ran in from the side. Knocks it towards the boundary. Now it was right pushed in the back of the side. The back says the umpire. Ridner debates the point. Collingwood's been involved in eight matches this season with the margin's been under two goals at the end. They've won five of them. So another close one. Starsevich at the back. Vickley free kick. Play on. McDermott. Jarman. To Smart. Mickens a target. Couldn't quite make it. Richardson kept his balance extremely well. Tregenza cut it off but couldn't quite pull it off in the end. Fraser. Turner leading pays and out of play. It could have been important there, Bruce, had uh, Tregenza been able to keep his balance. Jarman just two touches in the second half. Shaw's run very close to him in the second half. Jarman's first half, well, it was outstanding. Rowe, quick kick. Bickley in the front spot. Well played, though, by Russell. Very well played by Russell. Dacos and Hart. Oh, he's a great player, young Hart. Well done to Lee at half-back. Mick and the target in front. Two men against him. The big man unable to get rid of it effectively went to Krasiska, but he held it up long enough, Micken, against a couple of players, so he did the job. He did take it very well on the half volley, uh, Bruce, didn't he? It's an interesting game Micken's played today. He struggled at times, but he's uh, done the job, three goals, and held the ball in the area. McGuinness' second half has been terrific, out of play. So who wins it from here? Will it be Collingwood at 11-8 or will it be Adelaide at 9-12? It's a dead set even money bet at this stage. Shaw manhandling Jarman. Now Rowe running onto it. This is Turner. Out wide for Russell. He can take it and go. Russell from outside the 50 goes in short for McHugh and great pass. Yes, it was. It was the obvious play. McHugh and M. Dacos, both players, as soon as they saw Rowe had the ball, they were able to gain that couple of metres advantage. Just got away from the defenders there. Jonathan Ross and a terrific pass from Scotty Russell. Very important kick, this one. Another goal against the Breeze for Ron McEwen. Come on for Adelaide. Max told us early he's got a lower back problem. Ren won the tap. Jarman. There's Shaw with him. Holding the footy against Jarman. Free kick to Shaw. He's been good in this second half, hasn't he? As you mentioned before, Bruce. Tony Shaw has really tightened up on... Uh, Jarman, who was probably best on the ground in that first half. Defensive side of the centre square. Brings it to centre wing. Smart does exactly as Dennis Committee described earlier. The last three paces, very good. Worked his way to the front. He's kicked a half forward. Or Maynard, I think, was expecting Micken to go. And he's been paid the compliment, Maynard, of having Gay for tagging him. Here's Richardson with a fair bit of time. Francis, it wasn't a good kick to Genza. Shaw, still Shaw. Not enough pressure in the end. Lee and Rowe. Rowe did very well. To McGuan. McEwen. Francis running on. Should give it to him now. Does. Can he kick a Rover's goal? He should from here. Oh, back to Ronnie. The wrong option. Now he'll kick the Rover's goal. Round the body. There it goes. It's home. It's not going to be easy from here for the Crows as McGuan drives it down towards half forward. McCartney going nowhere. McDermott, all the Macs getting involved. Eventually it comes out to Bickley. Another one of them. McGuinness goes down towards half forward. Where's Hodges from behind? It falls in front. Lindner pulls it back far too much. Out of bounds on the ball. It may have bounced just inside the field of play. It did. It'll be thrown in in that left full forward pocket. Rose needing a goal here. Collingwood as they did last week, as they've done the best part of the season, showing tremendous fight in this second half. Stasovic thumps it out of bounds, gains about 10 metres. Another throw in. Mikin and Stasovic. Body to body. Almost been a free to Mikin there. Of the ball is Woods, and we've got a whistle. So just over 15 minutes remaining in the game. Wayne Corns on the phone. Marvellous day is football, this one. 
all around the league. McGuinness with the right foot. Close. Good, I fancy. It's a goal. Great snap by Tony McGuinness. And they're going goal for goal at Victoria Park. That's terrific. And well shepherded through there by uh, Scott Hodges in the goal square. Looking doing the ruck work on, work, work on the forward line. McGuinness very good on the uh, opposite side of his body. Not a natural right footer. And uh, well done by Scott Hodges in the forward line. Just chipping that one through. Adelaide still very much in this. 10-12, 13-8. That McGuinness goal should give them a big lift. 14-point margin. Wren wins the tap. Jamison against Turner. Lip tap to Bickley. To McGuinness who can nearly get it all the way here Hodges on the lead oh good mark a terrific mark by Woods McGuinness been very important in the second half G Woods over the top doesn't Pert love this scenario when he can run from the back line the handball by Richardson Shaw clever Turner dropped it should have been penalised Liptak McDermott to Lee to Bickley to McDermott goes for goal a high one Hodges well done Scott Hodges against Gary Pert well Gary Pert really uh, worried about the body there instead of worrying about where the ball was Adelaide making a change Jonathan Ross off the ground Tasca to come on and Tasca about to replace him but this should be a goal to Adelaide Hodges only about 20 metres out he's kicked three so far Bangs it as he got it. Oh. He misses. Oh, that is a bad miss, Scott Hodges. Hang your head. That would have been uh, a great opportunity to Adelaide, for Adelaide to come back from there. 3-3 three, three to Hodges. 13-8 to 10-13. Well, Ross on the bench now with Rowe. You just wonder how critical that one was. Pert to go in for Collingwood. 13 points the margin to the outer side. Ren superb. Too quick that time for Jamison. He couldn't control it. Russell stands firm. Back towards the outer side. Francis in front. Knocked away. Stasevich got it to support. They work it well. Francis falls across to McGuan, having got it from Shaw. McGuan chips it out wide. Fraser. He decides to run. Good endeavour from Tregenza. Altered the kick and up. Hart's in front. Yes, he's had a great afternoon, uh, Ben Hart. He's put that goss out of business. Tasker lays it off. Ben Shepherds. Lee decides to run it out. Chip pass. Maynard in front. The Crows trail by 13 points. They're kicking to the scoring end. Plenty of time. Maynard towards half forward. Richardson has been steadfast all day. Heads for the boundary. Got to say the Crows have plenty of time to recuperate. They can throw everything at the Magpies in the next 12 and a half minutes. Not that they haven't already. Wren penalised. Long course to get the three on the wing. Shaw calls for it. He's got it. Did he play on? No. Shaw hit hard early. A couple of very heavy knocks in the first term. As you'd expect. He shook them off. He's back, leading by example. McCartney, strong grab. Yes, good move and a good lead there from Jason McCartney. Playing well at centre half forward. Inside to Richardson. Russell in the front spot. Bickley, well done. Jamison. McGuinness stretched brilliantly to Liptak. He's not fully fit. Short pass to Micken was very good. 50 metres out. Get the feeling if Adelaide can score from here, they can still win this game at 13 8 to 10 13. Hodges in the square. Well, it looks like he uh, fancies his chances here, Mark Micken. We'll be kicking from about 55 metres. He's kicked three today. Well, he's got the distance. It's right there, but he hooked it. So he's had a mixed afternoon. He's kicked three goals, one, one goal miraculous, and he kicked one out of bounds on the fall that was very untidy earlier on. The margin, two goals. We reckon if Collingwood get one more, they'll win. They need one goal to win this match into the breeze, you'd say, because Adelaide's quite capable of kicking 
three in the last 12 minutes. But one extra one for Collingwood would make it very, very tough. Pert bangs it out. Starcevic doesn't go for it. He did it cleverly in the end. The handball was good to Jamison from Bickley. Jamison centering kick excellent to Hart. Micken on his own. Middle one now. Oh, no. Fraser comes across. Micken, well done. Paved it out towards uh, Maynard, who was tackled by Fraser and Gaifer. And the Gaifer tackle looked a bit high, but uh, it'll be a ball up. Centre half forward. Adelaide attacking. Wren leaves Monkhorst for the moment to go for the knock. Just a terrific game of football, this one. McDermott finds Dragenza, who pokes it up in the air, and Lindner takes a one-hander. Yes, use his body very well, Bruce Lindner. He started off the game with a very heavy bump on uh, Tony Shaw. That's not a great impact on the match. Bruce Lindner, very hit-and-miss type of player. But uh, he has a real chance to put Adelaide right back in this match. Very important kick for both these players. Lindner kicks truly. Five points. They lead by six points here. The Crows playing their last ten minutes of the season. Collingwood will come back next week and play in the finals. So Adelaide can throw everything at it. McGuan, Jarman well done. Squeezed it about five metres. Gaper, Jarman put the tackle on him. McCartney, well played, smart. Nicely read by Turner. Great tackle by Smart. It's been a wonderful match. Lee's kick, too far for Monkhorst. A bouncing ball. Krasiska, did he throw it? Well, he smacked it away to Monkhorst. Monkhorst's kick, Bickley read it beautifully. McGuinness, McDermott, all bad handball. He set his captain up. The quick kick by Russell. McCartney, half volley. Still McCartney. Back to Russell to Fraser who's been very very good McGuan McEwen and Big Ronnie around the body misses 2-2 to McEwen well a crucial play there that hand pass from Tony McGuinness putting uh, his skipper Chris McDermott under enormous pressure and the player about a metre away when he gave that hand pass they were up and running had he gone on to the forward line Tony McGuinness 13-9, 11-14. Ben Hart, virtually straight down the middle. Smart knocks it forward. McGuinness superbly in the open space. Tony Shaw with Trigenza closing. And closing very quickly. Gaper hand passes towards the boundary line and it trickles across. Throw in. Frank is not happy about the way he was disposed of. 8.40 remaining in the game. Seven points the difference. Collingwood in front. Francis. Open-handed hand pass from Shaw. Unpenalised. Richardson a very high kick. Bickley. Unkind bounce. The last man in the queue got it. That's Russell. McCartney, who was very good in the third turn. Dacos is down there. Fisted away by Hart. Taken by Bickley. He's been terrific. Gets it across to support. Driven around the outer side by Lee. Maynard running out of space and time. Francis got him. Out of bounds. It'll be thrown in. He knew he was gone there, Maynard, and that was uh, really the only option he had. 13 9, 11 14. Monkhorst and Wren. Wren in front. Francisca, the hurried kick. Russell comes to meet it. Still he goes, Russell. But McGuinness in the road. Back towards half forward for the Crows. Oh, strong Mark Micken. And they run on down the ground. The Crows have got the numbers downfield at the present time. He puts in the high ball. Hodges, was he shepherded it out of that one? Not according to the umpire. Woods has paid the mark and Kurt comes away. With a run. One bounce, left foot. Centre square. Oh. Excellent tackle, a brilliant tackle by Smart. Pays, Maynard, Jarman. Clever kick in the end round the body to the goal square. Getting back for Siska and force through for a bot line, an important one. Mullen back on for Collingwood. I say important because the margin is a goal. Kurt goes short. Been a magnificent afternoon of footy. Terrific finish. Here's Woods in the back pocket. Collingwood playing for the double chance. Adelaide going for six in a row. 
Maguire. Left foot. Russell good mark. Gee, made a terrific effort and got there. His clash with Bickley's been excellent. McDermott cuts it off. The two captains were together. Here's McGuinness, who's been inspiring. Again, the handball put the pressure on. Oh, Jefferson too slow. No real feel then. Rowe ripped it off him. Francis kicks the ball to the boundary line. Not out though. Lee. Now can Jamison make amends and take it off Moncourse? No. Uh, that's a bit like hoping for too much. Just uh, bad luck there for Jamison a moment ago, but he just didn't feel the Collingwood player on him. Moncourse around the other side. Smart knocks it forward. McGuinness somehow kept the ball. Away he comes from half back. High one towards half forward. Gaither gets it on the ground or tried to. Lipped at. Let it off hands. Rowe didn't have the ball. Scrambled out of defence by Gaither. Oh, the bounce beat lead. Brilliant pick up there by McMullen. Packed out of mid-air by McGuinness. Taken now by Lindner. Went looking for Credenza. Richardson in the road. Trying to crash his way through his door. Ball in the open space. Here's Fraser. Credenza works hard to run him down. Francis, back to Fraser, they close on him, he hoisted high inside the 50, all close off, clever mark, great mark to win. What a match is. He plays on the heart, and the young Tyros combine, out it comes to Pays, he turned 26 on Tuesday Pays, he kicks it down towards half forward, lip tack, off, oh, clever mark, not paid, should have been. Credenza over the ball, slapped out of bounds. And it will be blown in. Richardson, yeah. the hero that time for the Magpies. I agree, Dennis. I thought that was a mark for Liptak. Sure looked like it, didn't it? 13, 9, 11, 15. Micken, McDermott, around his body. To half forward, Rowe pushed out. Mark to Woods. And he's done pretty well in the back pocket, Tony Woods. Used his body cleverly on Stephen Rowe. Collingwood hanging on by the skin of its teeth. Involved in another thrill of the Magpies. It's been the story of their season. Drop punt the centre wing. Moncourse the target. Wren was there. It's tough and hard at the moment. Krasiska. Out on the fall. He actually had more time to do something with that, Gavin. Krasiska threw it on his boot very quickly. And what does a draw mean to the final six? <laughs> that throws it out. Probably won't help Collingwood. Well, unless it goes the other way in the other matches, Lee's kicked the set of half forward. Too hard a question, Dennis, at this stage. McDermott. Micken. Now, McGuinness is a thumping kick. He's got a chance to goal. Drop, punt, misses. He has enormous acceleration at the uh, first three or four metres. Chapman here, free kick. Coming back to McGuinness. Well, well, well. Oh, well. He'll kick this, Bernie. He'll go from here. What's happened? Now, let's see what happens here. The player just catching him late was Krasiska. Yeah. And, yes, he really did catch him too, Tony McGuinness. Caught him high. Really unnecessary, at this, especially at this stage of the game, to well, uh, make a mistake like that. It's a thumping kick. The breeze is behind him. The pressure's enormous. He's had 24 and 9. And you back him from here to goal. To tie it away. Drop punt. And I'm not a good judge. He's missed. Well, Hodges missed a very easy one. McGuinness was much harder. But it was kickable. 11-16 to 13-9. There's the time remaining. Gary Perth to bring it in. Acquired for the 7th and 15th picks in last year's November draft. He's had an interesting afternoon. Hodges... Well, is that the required two metres? Yes, it was. Ray comes. Some indecision in defence. Richardson has it close to the boundary line. High kick to the wing. Micken is up. Almost the mark. Stasevich battles on manfully. It comes back to him. And we've got a whistle. What a terrific finish. Just over three minutes remaining in the game. And the margin is five points. Collingwood's way. Adelaide finishing to the scoring end. It is line ball. Jamison feeds it. McGuinness in trouble. Back to Jamison. Kept his head superbly. McGuinness is centering. Kicks Stasevich defiantly. Mid-pack takes the mark. 2.40. And the clock continues to run. Stasevich in the back pocket. Hugs the boundary. Richardson. 
been very good today. Richardson to the wing. Oh, Glenn, what can you say about his guy? He's got right on top of uh, Monkwood, especially on the man-on-man -man contest. They both played as loose men in defence, but uh, when it's been one-on-one, -on -one, it's usually been the winner. Oh, good mark, Jarman. Terrific mark. Just too far out, you th say. He's a kick and a half away. Hodges will lead now. Jarman's going to go. What's he going to do? Jamison's a long kick. Drop punt. Blazes away. Pert versus Hodges. Oh. Gee, there was some wrestling going on there. Some real manhandling, the two of them. Scott Hodges looking for a free kick. I'm sure that uh, Adelaide can sense this now. Richardson. Francis. Out of play. A minute and a half remaining. McGuinness and Francis. <laughs> Funny. McGuinness, that is, still waving the finger. Starsevich over the back. Woods around the body, out on the floor. A minute 15, ticking down. Wren, is this the last big play of the match? To Bickley. Short, a big kick coming up. Hodges couldn't take it. And Woods marks. And maybe that's it. Who knows? There's 55 seconds remaining. And the clock, well, time on now called. So we've got 57 seconds remaining and Woods to take it at centre-half back. Did very well to uh, fill that gap there, especially yes. with Hodges on the lead and to stand his ground. He's done well back there since he came onto the ground. Great story, that. It's a quiet overseas. Well, smart on the wing. Last hurrah now for the Crows. He pumps it back in again at the fall of the ball. A big pack, as you can see. It comes behind the lip tack. Five points the difference, 30 seconds to play. Hodges has the ball, Mickham standing start. It goes straight up in the air, it's out of bounds on the full, is it? No off hands, it'll be thrown in, and the clock continues to run. So we're down to 20 seconds now. Collingwood playing for everything, and the Crows looking as if they are. Mickham and Monkhorst, 10 seconds. Can he do it again? No, Mickham doesn't get to the ball this time. That one out of mid-air would have done nicely there. Richardson runs it across. I think it's all over. Collingwood will win another close one. <laughs> Remarkable. Well, if I was an Adelaide Crows fan, I want their season 1993 to start next Saturday because they have finished... A tremendous club. Dennis, for the fifth time this year, Collingwood's won a match by one goal or less. What a game. And what fight by the Magpies. They will not be denied, Collingwood. It will stand them in good stead come the finals. Let's go down to Max Stevens. Well, mate, uh, one of the best games uh, from Adelaide's point of view, but you just kept on in there. Oh, yeah, we're getting... You know, it's not good enough, really, you know. We uh, jumped them early, then they got back in there, but it's just not good enough to keep just dropping off and then going up and off, you know. So we're going to have a good look at it if we're going to win the finals. You know? Were you impressed with Adelaide, the way they came near to Victoria Park? I mean, they have played some great footy in the last couple of weeks. Oh, they're, they're going to be a final side of the future, I think, you know. So oh, they're a very good, good running side, you know. And they, I think they've improved their tackling and defensive part of it too, so... Oh, they're going to be a really good side of the future. What did Lee say at half time? I mean, that was a turning point for Collingwood. Oh, just get out there. We dropped off our work rate and then get out there and tackle. So we tackled pretty well for the quarter. And I thought that's what got us in the game. OK, thanks for talking Thank with you. us and all the best in the final. Yeah, thanks. Johnny on the spot, or Max on the spot there, talking with Tony Shaw. So Collingwood win this by five points, 13-9-87 to 11-16-82. A terrific game of football. at uh, half time three goals down Lee Matthews swung the changes McEwen to full forward McCartney to centre half forward Tony Woods to the back pocket Graham Wright played on the wing in that uh, second half and all the uh, the changes well they were successful the, the stats well pretty even in the end Adelaide 
does use the handball very well, 145 to 170. And a couple of times they got themselves into trouble. But when they are using the handball well, yeah. there is no better side in the competition to watch. I've got to say, I'll go away from Victoria Park today thinking it's a game Adelaide should have won. I agree with that. A couple of half chances they should have taken. The big play, I thought, in that final quarter was that miscommunication in the middle between McGuinness and McDermott. Yes, no doubt about that. And also uh, a vital shot at goal by Scott Hodges from about 20 metres out. He took the strong mark and uh, really he had the chance to nail that one. Should have kicked it, he didn't, and Collingwood has won the game. That's right, Adelaide did not. Five points, the Magpies way. We'll be back right after this. Every last game tomorrow, the West Coast Eagles tackle Calvin at Subiaco level. And there's your telecast time, 1.30 Central. So, at Victoria Park this afternoon, it was Collingwood by five points. Time now to go back to Adelaide and John Casey. A very tough loss this one. Yes, that's right, Dennis. The Crows gallant in defeat. No premiership points from Victoria Park this afternoon. But the Crows certainly picked up a lot of credibility. And if they can maintain the form that they showed in the last six weeks, then maybe next year a finals proposition isn't out of the realms of possibilities.